Hey, hope you guys are doing well this Wednesday morning, getting all your Christmas stuff done. You'll notice change in our Instagram production. Not my phone at my desk, apparently from a bad angle, as I've been told, but now uh, on the stage with a camera. A little bit of a hallmark setting if we had some snow in the background, so hope, hopefully it's better for you. Um, Isaiah, a couple of things, two thoughts from what we talked about on Sunday. We looked at Isaiah 7, 10 through 16, a, a word of prophecy from Isaiah to the king Ahaz, who was a wicked king, and he was in a tough spot. And uh, without going through all the background, kind of the key verse for us, God said to Ahaz, I'm going to give you a sign, and this is going to be the sign I'm going to give you. A virgin will conceive, give birth to a son, and he'll be named Emmanuel. And then Isaiah fills out what that sign would uh, is pretend what it's portending. It's two things: a, a near-term deliverance for for Ahaz and Judah from two nations that are threatening them, and then a long-term punishment uh, for Ahaz and Judah because of Ahaz's um, refusal to trust the Lord. But that that verse, verse 14, is picked up in Matthew 1, uh, and quoted directly as a way of explaining what's going on with Mary. And what's going on with Joseph? It's explaining why Jesus was conceived in the way that he was. And it's Matthew 1, I think it's verse 26, says, And all of this happened in order to fulfill. And that's the key word for us. In order to fulfill, in order to bring to the desired end what God had spoken through Isaiah. And so as you're as you're preparing for Christmas and then you know, kind of the post-Christmas crash and moving towards New Year, these next 10 days, you may have some space to, to reflect. And I want that word to, to fulfill. Uh, I want it to encourage you. Maybe, maybe two ways that you can think about that. Again, to fulfill means to bring to a desired end. And so I hope that can give you some comfort uh, this Christmas as you think about Jesus' birth as the fulfillment of prophecies that were spoken 700 years and more before he was born. God is working he, in your life. He is a fulfiller of his desired ends. Again, your, your life, my life, we're not, they're not predicted in the Bible, but God does have plans and purposes for us, and he is bringing those plans and purposes to completion. Oftentimes, it, it, it doesn't look the way we think it would. We've talked multiple weeks in a row now about how the coming of the Messiah didn't, it didn't meet expectations. It, it didn't look like people thought, and that's why so many missed Jesus. And, and the same thing is true in our life. He is fulfilling his desired ends in our lives, but oftentimes we, we miss it because it doesn't look exactly like we think. And so I, I just want to encourage you to take some comfort in that. If, if right now, if maybe maybe you would say God seems a little quiet in my life or uh, I, I feel like things aren't necessarily moving, maybe you would say, I, I kind of feel like I'm working pretty hard at this and I'm not seeing a lot of fruit. I'm not seeing a lot of change, uh, honestly. I kind of feel like maybe God's asleep at the wheel to some degree. I just want to encourage you again, take comfort this December 25th. Let that remind you that God is a fulfiller of his desired ends. And I don't think you're going to have to wait 700 years to see the fulfillment of those things that he's doing in your life. And the second thing I would say, again, thinking about Christmas is, is expect God to fulfill his desired ends in your life. I want you to take comfort that he will. So maybe there's kind of a a relaxing you don't have to make things happen but I also want you to expect and those things can maybe create a little bit of tension in your heart but I think it's a good tension at the same time we want to trust and have confidence and have peace that God is at work and so we don't have to make things happen and we want to expect that God is at work that he is making things happen of course we have a part to play in that there's cooperation from us with what he's doing the work of the spirit in our lives but Again, I, I would encourage you, maybe if, if you've given up a little hope, again, maybe if at some point you're looking back and going, I, I don't see a whole lot of fruit from my year. Maybe you felt things were, maybe you felt a bit aimless. Maybe there were some things that you were desiring and those things haven't necessarily come to pass. And again, it can be easy to lose hope in those moments. And I want to encourage you to expect. Again, let Christmas be something that reminds you that God is a fulfiller of his desired ends. And so we want to take comfort in that. We can relax. We can be at peace. We don't have to make things happen. And we want to remain expectant. God is at work. He is moving. I can expect him to do some things in my life, to bring his plans and purposes to completion. So hopefully that maybe gives you a little something to think about, encouragement as you 
um, move towards Christmas, I'm going to say a prayer. And then I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And we look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve and then uh, Christmas Day as well. Y'all can pray with me. God, I thank you that you are a God who fulfills your desired ends. You're a fulfiller of prophecies, of predictions, and maybe we'd even say of the word promises. You're a fulfiller of promises. And Christmas is a huge kind of stamp of that. It's a big check in that column that you did send your son in fulfillment of all of these prophecies and predictions and promises. And I pray for all of us that that would encourage us as we think about our own lives. The places where we're frustrated, the places where maybe we're disappointed, the places where uh, maybe we've given up some hope. I pray that this Christmas that um, we would have a hope arising in us, an expectation that you're going to finish what you started in our lives. And I also pray, God, that there would be that sense of peace in our hearts that you are working and so we don't have to make things happen. And even if, if, if nothing's happening or in terms of what we can see or if the things that are happening are not necessarily what we want, we would trust you to work all those things out for our good. We would trust you to redeem and to restore and again and to, to fulfill the plans and purposes that you have for us. So Holy Spirit, would you bring peace into hearts that are maybe a bit anxious today? Would you start hope in hearts that are a bit uh, deflated and flat today and I pray that as we continue to prepare for your arrival and celebrating your arrival on December 25th that our um, we would keep in step with you we'd be aware of what you're doing in our lives and that you would lead us in terms of how to best cooperate with that work in Jesus name amen you guys take care